Hey everyone, it's your favourite math axolotl. And I'm Ricey Pop, your favourite study vlogger. And today we'll be asking Singaporeans some PSLE and O-level math questions to win some money. I've compiled a set of questions with three levels of increasing difficulty. Participants can choose between easy questions which are worth $10 each, medium questions which are worth $20 each, or hard questions which are worth $100! Participants will be given 5 minutes to solve one question of their choice to win some money. Let's go! Hi, what's your name? Uh, my name is Ella. On a scale of 1 to 10, how much do you like math? Uh, 4 maybe. Would you like it to be easy mode, medium or hard? Uh, I'll try the easy one. So this is the question. 16 mode. Uh, no. No. Uh, draw a model of like their total and uh, try to see how you can work it out from there. 22. Yes, that's right. Okay, congratulations! Thank you! This is your typical primary school model question. So let's draw a model diagram of how much Alice and Betty have. And what we want to find is the amount of money Alice has, which is one red bar over here. Since they both have a total of $56, two red bars plus one blue bar gives us $56. And since the blue bar is $12, we can do 56 minus 12 is equal to $44. And because $44 is 2 red bars, we can divide that by 2 to get the value of 1 red bar, which is $22. I'm Diana. And my name is Arisa. So this is the question. Uh, so how confident are you in doing this question? I'm not confident. I forgot everything. <laughs> what number? So f What number? Okay, you do ah. <laughs> I'm telling you to rule ah. You, you do ah. I forgot everything is here. I am so embarrassed. No, it's okay. You're almost there. Ah, wait. Does it mean it? So for the fiftieth term, how many times do you need to jump? It's not the hint. Is not it's not fifty times. It's yeah. I I, I can. Oh, okay. Thanks for trying, Don. Yeah, no thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's hundred minus one. That's ninety nine. Oh yeah. yeah oh uh, because you need to jump forty nine times. For this number pattern question, we can see that each jump between one term to the next is plus two. So let's try to find a pattern here. For the third term, we can see that it requires two jumps, and for the fourth term, it requires three jumps. Then we know that for the 50th term, it requires 50 minus 1, which is 49 jumps from the first term 1. So 1 plus 49 times 2 will give us the final answer of 99. This question can also be solved using the secondary school method where the nth term, Tn, is equals to a plus n minus 1 times d. Since the first term is a is equals to 1 and the common difference d is equals to 2, we can sub in n is equals to 50 for the 50th term and we can also get 99. Okay, hi, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Merida, I'm the founder of Skuro and I'm very bad at math. He promised me fried ice cream after this. So <laughs> I decided to do some math questions. And also, I've also been granted like access to his YouTube channel. So this is technically my Ooh. YouTube channel as well. So here it is. And we'll give you 5 minutes to do it on the iPad. 24 kilometers per hour. How far did travel? Blah, 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 blah. So 24 km for 60 <laughs> Oh, it's 48 km. <laughs> Because 24 km in one hour, one hour, I remember, is 60 minutes. Okay. And then 120 divided by 60 equals to 2. So then I 24, 24 times 2 is. I, and then, okay, I, I do the 24 times 2, then it's 8. And then. <laughs> this question is testing on the relationship between distance, speed, and time. The question is asking us to find how far Clarice cycled, which is the total distance. And from our magic DST triangle, distance is equal to speed times time. Because it is 24 kilometers per hour, we have to convert 120 minutes into hours, which is 2 hours. Finally, the distance is equal to 24 times 2, which is 48 kilometers. This is a question testing on the understanding of fractions. Imagine one whole is a big pizza which we cut up into 8 slices. 7 over 8 is basically just these 7 slices. And since we want to change 1 fourth into 8, we multiply the top and the bottom by 2. So 1 over 4 is equal to 2 over 8. If we just keep taking away 2 slices, and 2 slices, and 2 slices, we notice that the remainder is 1 slice, which is 1 over 8, which we can't take away 2 slices anymore. 
This question is all about dividing two fractions. So imagine if I tell you to divide something by 2, it's the same as multiplying by half. So we know that changing a divide to a times, it's basically flipping the fraction. So flipping 4 over 9 to get 9 over 4 and changing it to a multiplication, we can multiply the top and the bottom to get 9 over 24. Then dividing the numerator and denominator by 3, we can simplify it to get 3 over 8. I'm Heidi. I'm Medina. Uh, which mode would you like to be? Easy, medium or hard? Medium. So this is the question. So u squared equals 4 u. Yeah, then this is the final like. Wait, if we have no number, how do you find square root? Square root, you know? Oh, wait, wait, I don't know. Wait, I'm confused. Wait, is the answer a number? Yeah, the answer is a number. <laughs> yeah, we cancel the u out. Divide by u, so it goes u equals 4. Yes, that's right. The answer is 4, right? Yeah. <laughs> Here's $20. <laughs> if there's one thing you want to say to your math teacher, what would it be? I really, really, really don't like math. Um, thank you for teaching me. <laughs> Okay, I have to say that their method was not entirely correct, but I was feeling generous, okay? So let's imagine this square has a side length of x. Since the area is x squared and the perimeter is 4x, let's equate both of them to each other. The important thing is that we can't just cancel out the x on both sides because we will lose a solution. What we gotta do is shift everything to one side and factorize out x. And because of the zero product rule, x is equal to zero, which we need to reject, or x minus 4 is equal to 0, which gives us the final answer of x is equal to 4. Hi, my name is Kun Yang. Uh, my name is Iresh. Hi, I'm Pierre Pereira. I'm from Sri Lanka. Hi, I'm Atikali. I am from Sri Lanka. Okay, so this is the question. You have 5 minutes to solve it. 10x equal, 10x equal, uh, minus... Oh, this is equal to 4. Hey. Let's simplify first. 9x, nine 9x, nine right? Well, you can simplify this for factorize this. Then it's like a do cross multiplication. Do I cannot, I forget everything. Uh, sorry, the time is up. Do you want to see the solution? Yeah. The bottom. Huh? Actually, because this is 3x minus 2, or this is 3x minus 4. Yeah. Yes, the answer is correct. Oh. Yay, congrats. Yeah, $10. Oh, and you guys can have the question as a souvenir. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. This is a classic question on the algebraic identities that I took straight out of the TYS. Notice how at the top it's kinda in the a square minus b square form, so let's rewrite it as 3x square minus 2 square. For the denominator, we can factorize the quadratic to get x minus 4 times 3x plus 2. So remember the algebraic identity that a square minus b square is equals to a plus b times a minus b? So it becomes 3x minus 2 times 3x plus 2, and we can cancel out the 3x plus 2 from the top and the bottom, and we have the final answer. Uh, I'm Rie. Uh, I'm Chris. Awesome, okay. On a scale of 1 to 10, how much do you like math? 7. Uh, Zero. Okay, so this is the question that you guys are doing. I put it. Okay. So, move your hand. hand. Yes or no? I have no clue what you're doing. No, no, you do. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Okay, so what's the final answer that you guys have gotten? Yeah, right. Y equals the 2x plus 2. And that is correct! Congratulations! $3. In order to find the equation of a line, it's in the form y is equals to mx plus c, where we gotta solve for the gradient m and the y-intercept c. So let's plot these two points out on the graph and we draw the line. Since the line cuts the y-axis at 2 at point A, c is equal to 2. To find the gradient, it's the rise over the run. Since the y-value goes from 2 to 10, the rise is plus 8 and the x value goes from 0 to 4, the run is plus 4. Then the gradient is just 8 divided by 4, which is equals to 2. Then the final line equation is just y is equals to 2x plus 2. I'm uh, Matthew, and I'm currently studying uh, civil engineering in NTU. My name is Tiana. I'm in the AP system, so I'm taking calculus BC right now. My name is Kolb, and I'm doing pre-calculus. Uh, my name is Ken, and he's in my math class, so yeah. <laughs> Okay, so this is the question. Each of the sides are 1 cm each over here. Oh, this wasn't was um, uh, was the, the Pythagoras. 10 cm, then should be square root 10. Uh. So it's just 10 cm each. What are you talking about? 
Oh, it's it's it has to be root ten. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, very good. One side has to be square root of ten. <laughs> okay, square root ten is equals to square root three square plus one square. Okay, oh, that's the last hint. Okay, okay, okay. All right. So if this is two, this is three, and then we do this length over here. Oh, it needs to be fully contained though. M square is one square. Okay, sorry, time's up. Oh, you're really close, you're really close. And then in that case, we can draw oh, a square with that as the length. Like that, okay, okay. Yeah, what else are you talking about? Wait, oh, okay. <laughs> one and three? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're right, okay. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it's literally just like, Here. this is the line, right? So it's literally just like this. Yeah, okay. It, it's, it's fine if the lines aren't very straight, right? <laughs> what is this square? That's not a square, it's D4. Yeah, yeah. congratulations. Congratulations, y'all got it. You guys were really, really good at it though. You guys didn't even need to use my hint. Oh, and you guys can keep this as a gift. Oh. <laughs> I'll hang it up in my room, guys. Okay, so thank here's you. $20 for solving the medium question. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, this is the most interesting and my favorite question. Since we have to draw a square with an area of 10, the side length must be square root of 10. And that's where we gotta use Pythagoras' theorem. And we figure out that the square root of 3 square plus 1 square is equal to the square root of 10. So, the side length must be 3 units in one direction and 1 unit in another direction, and let's draw it out here in a corner. Then we can just repeat the same pattern and ta-da! We get a slanted square of exactly 10 cm squared. To find the volume of the cylinder, we first know that the area of the circle is pi r squared, and since a cylinder has a uniform cross-section of a circle, the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared times its height. In the question, the diameter of the cylinder is 10 cm, so the radius is 10 divided by 2, which is 5 cm. So doing pi times the radius 5 squared times the height, which is 20, it gives us the final answer of 500 pi cm cubed. Now, you might be wondering, did anyone pick the hard questions? And the answer is, kind of? Do you remember the girl that said that she took AP Calculus? After they won the medium round, I asked if they wanted to take a look at the hard questions just for fun. And this is what happened. Okay. No, I can do integration! This is easy, do you use substitution? Oh. <laughs> Wait, you actually got it! So in this case, you would do um, 1 over 2, integral 1 to 0. Um, you except we can't plug it in so we need to sub this back in so it's going to be 1 over 2 e to the power of x squared e to the 1 minus e to the 0 is equal to 1 over 2 e minus 1. Oh you actually got it that's the correct answer okay I'm gonna give you a bonus ten dollars just for getting that right okay but that was really really impressive no, oh, I'm studying calculus right now. So. Like you instantly knew that you had to use use substitution. So what made you think that? It's just practice, right? Solving similar problems all the time. It helps you understand because you know that the derivative of x squared is equal to 2x. And then you see x in the equation. So here's a bonus $10. Thank you for playing, guys. See you. Bye. Take care. For this integration question, we first try to consider a function that when differentiated will give us something similar to what we want to integrate. So let's try to consider y is equal to e to the power of x squared. And differentiating it, it will give us 2x times e to the power of x squared, which is really similar. So we know that integrating this will give us back this equation. So dividing both sides by 2, we can get our integral to be equal to half times e to the power of x squared. And then we can just sub in our limits from 0 to 1 to get the final answer of half times e minus 1. Another method that this girl did was the u substitution method, which I believe is taught in AP Calculus. So let's let u is equal to x squared, and differentiating u, we get du over dx is equal to 2x. Now we can manipulate this to get half of du is equal to x dx. Since we can see a x dx over here, we can replace it using half du and integrating it, which just gives us e to the power of u. Then putting it back in terms of x, we can sub in the limits and we can get the same answer. This question looks deceptively simple, and the most obvious solution is to let p of x is equals to ax squared plus bx plus c, and substitute these values in to solve for a, b, and c. However, it doesn't really lead us anywhere since there's only two equations to solve three unknowns. Okay, let's take a step back and try to graph this out. Since p of x is greater than or equal to x, this line y is equal to x is over here, and p of x lies on or above it. 
Then we can shift everything to one side, so p of x minus x is greater than or equals to 0, and let's rewrite out these equations. So p of 1 minus 1 is equal to 0, and p of 2 minus 2 is equal to 3. Now let's graph p of x minus x against x, and the degree of the polynomial doesn't change, so we know that it's still a quadratic. Notice this point over here. This point x is equal to 1 is actually a repeated root of the quadratic, so we know that p of x is equal to some constant k times x minus 1 squared. To solve for k, we can just sub in this equation where x is equal to 2 and p of x minus x is equal to 3 to solve for the k value of 3. Then we can just sub in x is equal to 3 to find the value of p of 3 which works out to be 15. Are you smart enough to get into Oxford? Because this is a question that I took from the Oxford Maths Admissions Test, and it's a really unique question. The first step is to find a combination of these two vectors that can add up to 10, 8, where a and b have to add up to 6. After doing some trial and error, we can notice that a is equal to 2 and b is equal to 4 to give us the vector 10, 8. Then we want to find out what's the probability that we can get 2 of this vector and 4 of this vector, because each vector has a probability of half, each unique permutation of 6 vectors has a probability of half to the power of 6, which is 1 over 64. Now here's the tricky part. How many permutations are there where there's 2 of this vector? We can actually do 6 choose 2, which gives us 15 unique permutations. Because each permutation has a probability of 1 over 64, the final answer is the probability of 15 over 64. I took this one from this year's Singapore Math Olympiad. And the first step is to use our trigo identities to convert this cosine of 2x into cosine square minus sine square x, which can further rewrite into the form cosine x plus sine x times cosine x minus sine x, and we can see that we can cancel out with the denominator. Okay, here comes the tricky part. To find the maximum value of cosine x minus sine x, let's convert it into the R formula, R cosine x plus alpha, and we know that the maximum value of cosine of anything is 1. Then all we need to do is to calculate r to get square root of 2, and the answer is just square root of 2 times square root of 2, which gives us 2. This was a question that I came up with, which is 100% math axolotl certified. And the tough part about this question is asking ourselves, what base do we change all the logarithms to? So let's try changing all the logarithms to base x, and we can see that the fractions cancel out. And since all the logarithms have base x and are added together, we can use the logarithm laws to multiply 2 times 3 times 6, which is equal to 36. Now converting it into the exponential form, we get x squared is equal to 36, which gives us x is equal to negative 6, which we have to reject, leaving us with x is equal to 6 as the final answer.